I'm not trying to make it real. To, be, to make a photograph that makes the world look real would seem to be kind of pointless. I'm trying to present a fictional world that has more truth in it. The editor-in-chief who really took a kind of a liking to what I was trying to say was Franca Sozzani of Vogue Italia. And she understood that I wasn't into just making happy, squeaky clean pictures and I wanted to say something. So I had my message and then I had my means, which was my, you know, my message is the world is a bit fucked. My means were through a fashion magazine to show this, to trick people into buying into it, to look at these pictures and think that it's something beautiful, but actually that it was unsettling. When I started photography, colour was not really used in an expressive way. It was used much more in a naturalistic way. And actually the, the main idea about photography when I began in the mid-90s was that black and white photography was artistic. And colour photography was kind of... Well, colour photography was just represented the real world, but that, that black and white was somehow transformative and therefore art, you know. I thought this was kind of worth challenging and so challenged it. I think working for a magazine like Vogue Italia, you could say what you wanted about the world, but if it was ugly, they wouldn't print it. I thought nothing better than actually to kind of ambush the reader in a magazine like Vogue with these, these images that were seemingly beautiful, but actually unsettling. For example, the series of images about lipstick colors, but have no girl in the picture to wear the lipstick, like a fried egg with a cigarette stubbed out in the egg. But at the end of the day, it's a rather ugly picture, an ugly thing made beautiful. The project I did with Harlan Miller, the painter, um, they were based on his amazing paintings of these kind of faux book covers that he does. I took these paintings and reduced them back to being just simple books. Gilbert and George, I'd photographed before. I thought about this idea of a female stranger, or even an and androgynous stranger, arriving at their home and spending the weekend. With Maurizio Catalan, I thought maybe there could be this sort of classical muse who is questioning his work in her space. These three collaborations that hang together really beautifully. There's a great kind of play of textures from project to project. To say my preference would be to photograph women would be um, an understatement, of course. I, I didn't really have that sort of father figure, so the woman, the, the, the mother, the sister, the wife figure were much more kind of concrete stories for me to work with. You know, I'm interested in the woman as a, a protagonist and a central figure in my story about the world and how uh, I feel the world is such a strange place. And I don't want to just make a picture that's sexy. To me, that's completely pointless. You know, I'm after a picture that's troubling. My father, although he was absent, he himself was a, was a great kind of colorist, taught me how to focus the lens on the eyelashes of the subject. I always liked that. And even today, I still use that trick of, of looking very, very closely at someone's eyelashes and focusing on them and defocusing and then focusing again on the eyelashes. My pictures try to be truthful. It's just about what motivates human behavior. You know, the great fiction is more truthful than uh, reportage in newspapers, possibly, you know. That you really get to the truth of the human spirit and the soul and uh, the animal that we are. <laughs>